Hi guys, so today is part three in my runestone element themed creations. So today we are doing earth and here are my runestone molds. So far I have done fire and water and if you haven't seen those check them out. Okay, here's the plan. And I don't know if it's going to work, so we'll see. I want to do a layer of clear. Then I want to do the flowers. And then I want it to have stone on the back. So I want, when you look at it, I want it to look like flowers, like on top of like a stone. I mean, I know it's not going to look like ivy crawling up the, a stone, but that's kind of like the vibe I'm going for. I am going to try and make the stone out of Litz Resin Gray and White mixed with clear UV resin so I won't be using that much fun showcase. And I'm wondering if the bottom clear layer should have a few specks of glitter in it. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I don't know. I guess just a teensy pinch of glitter can't hurt, right? Right. Okay, I'm going to put a little glitter in it. I decided I'm going to use this glitter that I got as a sample from Glittery Crystals, and it's called Field Butterflies. So there's just like a few tiny silver butterflies and then some small iridescent glitter in two different gauges. I am not going to add much at all, like just a pinch. So I tend to overdo things which I am trying to get better at not doing. There we go. I think that should be good. Maybe if I could grab like a couple more butterflies. Okay. Let's stir this. Yeah. Barely any in there, which is perfect. So I'm going to try to not get more than one butterfly per. And this is just a little top base coat, you know? Alright, so we want to turn this around and make sure that all the, the clear is leveled out and it's to all the edges and all the bubbles that can be popped are popped. Alright, that looks good. Now I'm going to cure this really well. Alright, I pulled out some flowers and they're all down here. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see. So that's kind of what I got going on down there. And I decided not on these bigger flowers or on the the shells. I should have used those in the water, but the water ones are busy enough. So now I'm just going to put clear down and then I am going to place the flowers in it. So I was looking into the difference between the resin that people use for acrylic nails and then the resin artists use for stuff like this, like UV resin. What is the real difference? I, I've been curious and I think I'm going to do a video on it and I will let you guys know what I find out because I it took me a while to find proper research about it and I've read some articles and I don't know if you guys are curious like I am about it but I will let you know what I find oops that one's going in there I guess <laughs> he made up his own mind They're sticking together. Can I separate them? Okay. This guy wants to go in there. This is my favorite part. 
what's your favorite part? I love just the decorating aspect and the creative. I guess glitter is another favorite part. I think this might be my favorite one so far out of the elements. Alright, they've all got their flowers in them and I put a little extra layer of clear over it. They'd actually be really cute just like this, I think. But I do want to back them with a solid color. It totally could have been green, but I think that it'll pop more on the gray. The reason I could use like a bigger cup than this, but I don't want to mix too much resin at once because you just know it won't cure if you're doing too big of a batch. Granted, the color might be more correct, you know, like the variation in grays between them. I'm just gonna try and be pretty precise about how much color I'm adding. So that's one drop. Oops, you can't see. Two drops, three, four of white. And then let's mix that. And then I'll start adding the gray in after that. Out of the fun showcase, there isn't a gray. There's a black and a white. I guess I could have mixed those two. But we're here now. And you guys have already seen how those ones perform on the other ones that we've mixed. You know what? Actually, since this one doesn't have any fun showcase, we can see if these perform better than the other ones. Okay, I'm just gonna do one drop. Oh, it's not even open. It is a virgin resin. Gotta poke a little hole in it. Your maiden voyage. Here we go. Let's see what you look like. I'm just doing one because I want it to be pretty light. So I'm thinking. So there's one more drop. I'm thinking of using pepper, but I don't know. We'll see how that looks. Yeah, I think this is gonna be perfect. So four drops of white to two drops of gray. That's perfect, yes. Okay, because I want the little specks to stand out, so let's see. Yes, I'm literally putting pepper in here. I think that looks like stone. I really do. Oh, I like it. What do you guys think? I guess we'll have to see the finished product. Let's start pouring. Oh, I think it's going to be cute. Now, um, one thing I wanted to say about the dried flowers is they kind of they don't keep moisture, but they get air trapped in them. So expect bubbles if you're working with dried flowers. I mean, some people are really good working with flowers, like um, Artsy Madwoman. I don't know if you've seen her tutorials, but she is great with dried flowers and resin. That's like her thing. Ooh, look, they're darker. Ever so tiny. 
tiny, tiny little drop. There we go. Oh, so tiny. I used to babysit this little girl named Emily, and whenever anything was small or cute, she'd be, oh, so tiny, oh, so small, oh, so cute. <laughs> pretty close. I'm gonna go with it. I'm getting pepper everywhere. Surprised I'm not sneezing. Alright, let's make these. After I pulled them out, I just put them in this tin, if you haven't seen me use this before, and then I put them in the windows so that they can get all the sunlight they need. So right now, um, I have went through and I've sanded them all. They didn't need much sanding compared to the last two, but they do have quite a bit of bubbles. Right now I'm looking for any that I can do bubble surgery on. <laughs> and if you work with resin, I'm sure you know what bubble surgery is. If you look here, can you see that little bubble in the corner? Right there, so I'm just filling it with resin. So I'll just do a little bit at a time, and then I'll cure it, and then I'll do more. And that way I can try and fix any of the holes that are fixable and some are on the top and that you can you won't see them after you dome it. I'm curious for those of you who sell your resin pieces what happens if you get a bubble do you I mean obviously if it's a huge bubble you're gonna probably start over but what techniques do you use to get rid of your bubbles and then also I'm curious like will you still sell a piece if it has just like a few bubbles in it or do you just decide to scrap the whole thing then so let's go through these little guys I'm gonna just I'm gonna put a couple at a time how about three there we go I really like this blue one It's one of my favorites pink one's not bad too. Let's see if you guys can find the one with two butterflies. How about that? This one's, these two are just kind of plain. I do like the flowers that's in here, the purple and pink, and I thought it could stand alone, but I think it needs more. And then this one I'm just not a fan. These bigger petal flowers, they just don't look right. They look like, part of them looks like they got wet a little bit and then I don't know they just don't pop right so if you try this I think the vibrant colors just look better and maybe that's because I have a light background I don't know see these all have those bigger petaled ones and I just don't think they look right these these little guys look better and the little um I don't know, they remind me of fireworks, these little ones. But the bright ones, I think, look really good. Like the blue looks nice. I mean, the pastel looks okay. This one is petally, but it's better because it's bright, you know? This one has the dandelion wisps in it, and seriously, you can see them. I don't know how close it'll focus. Can you see them? So let's try the brown, and then if we don't like that, um, it might need to be darker. This is kind of like a a poopy shade of brown, huh? Or I could just get some paint out and actually paint them. Hmm. Let's try green. Because this 
is the darker green and it's still pretty light. So I have that. Oh, I don't like either of those. Okay, let's try the light green. Actually, the light green's kind of nice. I don't know. I got these new white markers. At Target, they have these white chalk markers, and then they have gold and silver in the dollar section. <laughs> yeah, that's not that great. Let me try the regular Posca white. It's a lot brighter. Okay, my husband doesn't like either of them, any of them, and I agree. He said a darker brown, and that's pretty much what I thought I should have done before because that brown is pretty dooky. So I'm just pouring some in here, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of black, just a little. See? Just the tiniest bit. Oh yeah, look at that. That's perfect. Nice, like a wood brown, like a dark tree trunk brown. Oh, did you guys see my... I changed my polish. I didn't need to, but I wanted to try. This one's called Blushing Rose Quartz. They came out with like a limited edition, different rocks. So there was like a purple geode and an opal the opal one is super cool and then this is the quartz and there's one more oh there's like a oh there's two more there's a turquoise one so it's like teal with black veining and then there's um a, a marble one too which is really cool i love these i highly recommend so i'm just brushing it on and wiping off just if there's any extra what do you think i don't know I am not happy. I tried adding a little bit of this like iridescent green and it just looks like iridescent dookie. No, as it dries it actually looks kind of cool. I don't know iridescent dookie or not. What do you guys? I wish you guys could talk to me. Let's see how that looks. Actually, it kind of gives it that more magical forest look. See, here's the color that I added to it. This, like, green right there. Kind of looks like a tree with moss on it. Or that's what I'm going to tell myself, okay? That's what we're doing. <laughs> Hmm. Maybe it should just be a forest green. I'm going to add green. All right, guys. I've got this artist loft dark green. It's really pretty. I'm putting it into the brown, though. Well, let's just see if that shade is even something worth going in that direction, you know? All right, I'm going with the brown with the green powder in it. But let me know if you guys like seeing my indecision or if I should just cut that out and go straight into my what I've officially decided to do, you know? I don't want to waste your time, but I also, I want to know, do you, do you like being part of the decision? Do you like seeing what goes into making the decision? Or do you just want to, do you just want me to get on with it? <laughs> don't feel like you're going to hurt my feelings. I don't have feelings. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Sometimes things just feel super right. And then other times you just... I think that there could have been a better option, I think. 
Yeah, I like this. I, you guys probably can't see the the iridescent sheen that the green is putting off. It's actually quite pretty when you move it in the light. I don't know. And then I mixed a teensy bit of Artist Loft Deep Green and then this pearlescent iridescent green mica powder, which I got in like a set. Oh God, if I pull this out, are they all gonna? So they're each one is like, this is iridescent blue, this is pink, gold. And then I did like a swatch test of them on here. So like, this is with water and that's without. I mix them with like um, wax when I do my like wax seals and mix them with paint. You can pretty much mix them with anything. They're just like mica powder. You can use it for everything. So I just poured a little bit of UV resin on here. Make sure you don't get any bubbles. Make sure your paint's dry. Push it to the edge, but you don't want to go over the edge. You just want to get that surface tension. You don't want to not go close enough, too, because that just don't look good. I kind of pull it up close to get, like, um, to make sure I'm not missing any spots too. And then I cure it. And I think it's pretty and colorful. Um, Earth is full of colors and beauty. I don't know. I just love all the colors in the rainbow that are in this one and how bright and happy it is. And I hope you're having a bright and happy day. Mm -hmm.